Hi everyone, it's Rebecca from The Performance Project and this week uh, I just wanted to tell you guys a few stories um, about athletes who had to play the long game. So a few coaches have discussed this the last couple weeks about um, athletes playing the long game, particularly professional athletes are going to have to dig deep um, not knowing when the next races are going to be. Um, so I just wanted to tell you guys a few stories about athletes in the past who have been forced to take a long break from racing and um, huge positives actually came out of that long break. So hopefully this gives you guys uh, a bit of positive um positive news and positive stories um, so that you can take some time and think about the positives that could come out of this situation. So the first story is Carrie Ann Marshall. So Carrie Ann Marshall is a South African runner. She does both trail races and road races. She's a gold medal winner um, at the Comrades Marathon, has placed top 10 lady at two oceans marathon and she also excels excels at trail racing so in december 2016 um carrie Atten got um, surgery on her acl so she tore her acl at the otter race in october end of october 2016 and ended up getting surgery in december 2016 so the recovery from ACL surgery, in particular in, in getting back to endurance running, is, is a very long recovery process. So she started that recovery process, got back to limited exercise, um, but didn't get back to racing um, because she actually had a baby um, in December 2017, so a year after the ACL surgery. She had a baby, so obviously she um, had her break from running was extended because of the pregnancy and, and birth. So she started racing again only in August 2018. Okay, so so now we she was coming up on um, almost almost two years. Um, of not racing, definitely more than a year and a half. Um, so she started racing, just did some local races, and then her big race back was actually Ultra Trail Cape Town, the 100K in December 2018. So now we're two years post ACL surgery and two years and a bit post um, her tearing her ACL. And she got second place at that year's race. Um, and did 11 hours, 53 minutes on a very, very technical 100K race course. So um, that's just one example of, of an elite athlete who was forced to take an extremely long extended break from racing. Um, but she has said um, in interviews that, you know, she, she never lost sight of of fitness so fitness was always part of her regimen she always did what what she could so when you have a nice good base of fitness when it's time to train for a race it's just a matter of moving from um, being fit and committing to exercising every day to following a specific periodized training program that might be 16, 20, 24 weeks in duration, depending on the race that you're preparing for. Okay, so the second, the second story I want to tell you guys is um, Gwen Jorgensen. So Gwen won the Olympic gold medal in triathlon at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games. Um, she had an amazing, amazing stretch of wins from 2012 to 2016. Probably won't, won't see that type of winning streak again for a very long time in, in, on the ITU circuit. Um, and then after 2016, um, Gwen had a baby. 
and then she um, switched from triathlon to marathon running and has now ultimately moved to um, targeting the 5k and 10k distances on the track. So in May 2019, um, she had surgery on her on her heels. So she had what's called Haglund's deformity, which is um, actually quite common in endurance runners. I don't know the research behind it, but essentially you have additional bone growth on the back of your heel um, that makes it quite painful to run. And these runners also tend to have a lot of Achilles issues because of the deformity. So she had surgery um, in May 2019. And her last race had been um, the October 2018 Chicago Marathon. And then she only started racing again in February 2020. So she went, so she's a professional athlete and she had to go 15 months without racing at all. So it involved, you know, a complete break from running, obviously after the surgery, a ton of rehab, lots of commitment to strength, strength training and then ultimately she was able to start running again with the number number one rule being she had to be able to run pain free so it was a, a slow build up for her but she committed to the rehab the strength work and building up her running again and making sure it was pain free and then ultimately um she got a 5k pb um just this month in 15 minutes and 10 seconds so that was um, a huge huge win um, for Gwen after such a long time without racing and I really think it's a testament to her playing the long game um, committing to taking care of her body not losing sight of her goals staying motivated and again just like Carrie Ann's situation she never ever lost sight of fitness and moving her body every day and committing committing to training and making sure that she was setting these short-term goals so right after surgery the goal was to be able to get back to walking pain-free and doing her rehab exercises and then the next follow-up goal was getting to to be able to run pain-free so it's setting those little goals along the way so that it wasn't just, oh, you know, after Chicago Marathon, she wasn't thinking, oh, I have to go 15 months without racing and I'm a professional athlete. What am I going to do? So uh, uh, it is quite important to set those little intermediate goals along the way when you don't know when the next race is going to be. So the, the last story is... Um, you know, the first two were examples of elite and professional athletes. So I think it's important to also highlight um, amateur athletes. So I've been coaching um, Sean since 2014, December 2014. So he's um, my longest client. Um, so Sean's situation um, in February 2015 at Kango Marathon, he got a pelvic stress fracture and had to pull out of the race at the 32k mark and it was um, a really nasty stress fracture because he almost raced the whole marathon um, with with the stress fracture so he pushed himself um, really really um, to the to the breaking point and he wasn't able to run he didn't run from february 2015 um, to he kind of got going again about mid-May so it was about three and a half so three and a half months of no running um, and then he signed up for Ultra Trail Cape Town 100k in 2015 which is in December so he went 10 months um, with with no racing and he ultimately he had a very very long build up to Ultra Trail Cape Town because he was starting from his first run was five minutes of running, um, and that was mid-May. And so um, his his buildup was from to the race was from May to December. So it was a very long buildup um, 
but ultimately he finished the race in 14 hours 27 minutes which um, at the time in 2015 they still had the really stringent 15 hour cutoff so for him that was a huge win um, that we were just thrilled about and so that's you know the final example um, of an athlete just having to play the long game and having a long stretch of time with no races but again it was those small intermediate goals what can you do today well the first day was let's try and attempt a five minute run um, with no pain um, and then also committing to fitness so the the two major lessons from these stories is is a even though we're in um, uncertain times in terms of races don't lose sight of fitness because once you lose lose fitness it's really hard um, once a race is back on the schedule it's it's very hard to come back from that so don't lose sight of your fitness even if you don't want to follow a periodized program right now or do quote-unquote training you know, you can still have um, a looser structure and you can decrease your training load even as much as 50% and you'll only lose, you know, 10% of your overall fitness. So, so keep that in mind. It doesn't have to, you don't have to be training extremely hard right now, but you still have to commit to fitness. And then the second big lesson from these stories is to set intermediate goals um, even if you have a long period of time before your next race make sure you're setting intermediate goals um, as it pertains to sport and it can be it can be anything um, really so just pick a goal that that means something to you it can be working on your running form or your strength or um, you know, getting into, if you're normally only do road running, maybe you want to do a bit of trail running. It can be, the goal can really be anything as long as you're setting some sort of, of intermediate goals. Um, I know for myself, um, we don't know what's going to happen with races here in the spring and summer. So my next race is, is not going to be until October, but it's a mountain 50 mile race so and I don't live in the mountains so my intermediate goal is is really to to get stronger um and commit commit to some to some serious strength training right now that I'll be doing at home or at a at a gym where I can practice practice distance from from other people um so so that's it um those are the three stories that I wanted to tell you guys today. So please, please contact me. Um, we're here to support you guys. Even if you just want to chat, um, we're all sort of going through similar things right now. And we're here to support you um, no matter what. So stay strong and stay healthy. And I will chat to you guys soon.